In this section, we're going to talk about translating mel commands, which are helpfully echoed here in the script editor, uh, into Python. So we're going to start with the very simple sphere command. So sphere semicolon, and then I hit the two arrows to execute it, but keep the script down here. We get our output, and we get our sphere. So that exact same command here in Python is mc.sphere, and then open and close parentheses. So the MC here is just giving Python the address that the sphere command lives in the maya.commands library that we have imported. So if I run the same code, we get our sphere. So let's pop back over to mel, and we'll give it a little argument. So the argument here will be a radius argument, so we'll say dash r, and our radius can be 5. So if I run this, there we are. We'll get our uh, sphere with a radius of 5. To make this exact same command in Python, rather than saying dash r5, we're going to say r equals 5. And that's all you got to do. Each flag relationship that you would normally see here in mel as dash r5 and then space, and then there would be something else like, you know, start sweep 0 and sweep 360. Actually, let's uh, let's make that 180 so we can kind of see what these these are doing here. Oh, and I need to put a little dash there. So dash in front of the flags and then a value. We will get half a sphere. So to get this exact same result in Python, each little argument is going to be separated by a comma and then end sweep equals 180. So we've got the exact same thing here, three different arguments for the command separated by commas. So when I run this, I get the same result. So to my eye, this is actually a little bit easier to understand because things are a little bit more compartmentalized than here in the mel script where it can kind of just turn into a blur of dashes and letters and numbers and whatnot. So let's look at one more. Let's look at the move command. So I'll go ahead and clear my history, run the command, and I'm going to hide the grid. So display grid, and I'll just move it some number in what turns out to be the Z axis. So what I can do is actually copy that code and come down here and paste it. And now when I run this, it's actually going to create and move the sphere at the same time. Well, not the same time, but as far as you're concerned, at the same time, it's happening, you know, uh, step by step, but it's so quick we can't see it. So what if I wanted to actually change this value so that it's something specific, right? So let's just go 10. I can totally change that to whatever I want. So now when I run this code, we can see that the pivot is, uh, might be a little bit hard to see, but right exactly on this line here, which is the tenth unit out from the origin. So now we're going to copy this code, head over to Python land, and paste it in. So now we've got to translate this into Python. So the first thing we're going to do to make this easy is turn it into, whoops, in Python, the pound sign gives us our comment. So now I will come down here and I just say mc to give it the address of the command, move, and then open and close parentheses. Now you'll notice in Python we don't need the semicolon. Uh, sometimes I've left it in there and not gotten an error, but in general you don't need it, so it shouldn't be there. So we already know that we need to lose the uh, dash there, so I'll say r equals... So this is where it gets maybe a tiny bit confusing. So in the mel, we just have dash r. So that's essentially saying this move is going to be a relative movement. And then we have the x, y, and z values. Whereas in Python, what we need to say is r equals true. So it understands that, like, just sometimes in mel script, just stating a thing makes it true. 
because it's in this case it's either going to be relative or absolute so by putting r it understands the value is supposed to be relative so in python to get that same result you need to say r equals true and then we have these values 0 0 and negative 10 but here is one way in that python is a little bit tricky and that is the values for a move command have to come before you specify whether or not it is relative or absolute. So here we have 0, 0, 0, or sorry, 0, 0, 10 separated by commas, and then another comma, and then r equals true. So it's a little bit confusing. We have to specify that the relative value is true and move the numbers in front of that. So if I run this code now, uh, well, I went the other direction. I need to make this negative 10. Let me try that again. So what happens if you put the r equals true in front of the values? You will get a very important error. And it's important because what it means is you need to switch the order of your arguments around for your command in order for Python to be able to translate it into something that Maya can, can use. So I'll go ahead and clear my history and I'm gonna hit the uh, run uh, execute all button here and this is what I get. So if you ever see this, and I promise you will, if you see non-keyword arg after keyword arg, that is a dead giveaway that your commands are, and uh, your the, the flags of your command are out of order. So even though you're doing exactly what the ML script did, it's still gonna fuss at you. So just an FYI, you must always put the values first and the uh, relative or absolute flag second. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you could omit the absolute flag, relative flag altogether. So that's another thing to be aware of is just because it is spit out by default in the mel code, we have our dash r here, does not necessarily mean that you're going to have to include it in your, uh, your recreation of that command. Uh, just about every command has default values. So in this case, it probably was a relative movement, but uh, you know we were getting a little complaint about the non-keyword arg after keyword arg. So I just got rid of the relative argument and the command ran fine. So we're gonna probably run into 10 million little tiny bugs like that. It happens all the time as this part of programming, especially when you're, you're getting started. So be patient. There is a usually a pretty simple solution to those kinds of things once you learn to recognize uh, what they mean. Python is a little bit less forgiving with regard to its errors than the MEL is just because the Python is kind of encapsulated. Let me actually just add this back in. So I'm purposefully doing this wrong. So putting the relative in front of the values. So I think the Python kind of gets executed as a single piece and then handed over to the to the uh, the uh, Maya because it doesn't give you what line number the error is on. Whereas the MEL script, if you write a big MEL script, it'll tell you line three has a problem on it. Whereas Python, it's usually line one and then something crazy. So to illustrate that. I'm going to hit the uh, execute all here, and what we can see is the error is apparently on line one, but in reality is that it's on line seven. So that is probably one of the main less cool things about using Python and Maya, and that is that you don't necessarily get a good location for where your, your bug is, and if you've got a bunch of code, that can be kind of an annoying thing to track down, but there are strategies that I will show you guys uh, for how you can track that stuff down. So there you go, that is a very basic uh, primer on translating MEL script that is auto-magically generated here by doing stuff in the UI into useful Python.